Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again. We're going to continue my testimony as I understand even personal revival and corporate revival. I told you last week about um, how that worked in my life, but I want to tell you something that happened afterwards. So I came home from that trip I told you in Marietta and I began to tell everybody about my experience with understanding that Jesus is my life and how I invited him to be my sanctification and my service and uh, my shepherd by faith. I told everybody. In fact, that very day when I came back to the church, my friend David was in the altar. I talked to him about what, what God had done in my life and he was dealing with the same thing. I went home that night and I talked to my wife and the kids at the table about what God had done in my life that day. That was kind of a practice that we had to talk about what God did in our life. I told my pastor friends. Um, I gave my testimony at my school there at Tennessee Temple. And so I just went everywhere. And, you know, there were different responses. And they thought, well, well, Joe, you've been burned out and you've understood some things and others were skeptical and so forth. So I got all kinds of responses, but it was real to me. But I noticed that after two years, I crashed and burned again. Oh my word, I was back in this depression again. What had happened? You'll never believe this, but my wife and I were shopping in, uh, with the kids. And as I received the mail that day, I opened up the mail and there was a little booklet in there about a person who gave his testimony that was almost identical to mine and how he ended up back in a kind of a depressed state too. And he said it was at that point that God directed me to be faithfully in his word. Now, I know somebody's probably saying, well, Joe, you should have known that in the first place. I know, but I was in the word at the beginning, you know, but I didn't understand the Christ life. And then I, I heard that. And you know how the pendulum sometimes swings too far and so I just counted on that experience that day on the way to Marietta. And through that little booklet, I have no idea who said it. I have no idea who wrote it. But I learned that I had to become a man of the word. You know, this is cool. Because if you're a pastor, you're thinking, Joe, I don't want my church to be experience oriented. I understand. You want it to be word based. I understand. And see, here's the cool thing. You can have a church that preaches the word, but also you can have a church that sees the reality of the truth in the word. A couple of scriptures. Proverbs 2, my son, if you receive my words, treasure my commands within you, incline your ear to wisdom, apply your heart to understanding. Cry out for discernment. Lift up your voice for understanding. Seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. I will tell you that I've never been able to just live on experience because it can fade. You know feelings can go up and down, right? I also know that the Greek allows us to have the word logos for the word and rhema for the word. And the rhema Greek word is like, so the, the words come off the page and minister to me and it becomes real. I think it's important that the word becomes real to us. And, you know, you guys know what it is to have insights and say, wow, guess what I saw in the word today. So they go together. And... There's another prayer that the Apostle Paul has over here in Ephesians that's just so good for us to pray for each other individually, having our battle buddies and so forth, but also in the church. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 15, here's how Paul prayed. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, your love for the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, now listen, may give to you the spirit of wisdom 
and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory, and he says, and the power of his resurrection. I think, I think we need to know that the stuff that we really believe is really real. And we can pray for each other in that. And, and, and in that, you have people who walk in revival. You have churches who live in revival. They're talking about what God is doing in their life. And they're transparent because they see the logos and then the reality of the rhema. And so I just want to share with you that you can't live on just the fluff of maybe a fun experience. You have to get back in the Word. And I will tell you that that was such a turning point in my life. I remember I went and bought a giant print Bible and I read the Bible through in three months. I want to do this. And that's the way I have to live. And as a result of that, God becomes real for everyday living. And that's great. God bless you individually and as churches. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know, okay? Thanks for checking in.